I was recruited to the Sanger Institute in 1997, really just before the main human genome sequencing project really got scaled up. Once the genome had been sequenced, the main activity was really working out how to annotate that single sequence. Sequencing was still expensive. It wasn't really anticipated that we'd be sequencing many, many people. We've gone from taking years to sequence the whole genome to being able to do it in a single day. You can sort of use an individual's genome to try and diagnose them individually as a sort of start of personalised medicine. The 100,000 Genomes Project uh, originated at the London 2012 Olympics where the Prime Minister gathered together scientists and clinicians from around the world who advised him that the moment was right for a large-scale transformation of the application of genomic medicine in a healthcare system. UK Prime Minister David Cameron set out a groundbreaking commitment that we would sequence uh, the entire genome of 100,000 NHS uh, patients in cancer and rare diseases and we're determined to harness the power of the NHS as the world's only fully integrated single-payer healthcare system for changing the way we treat medicine in the 21st century. This is fundamentally a health service transformation program designed to dramatically change the application of genomic medicine in healthcare systems here and as a pathfinder for people around the world. Genomics England has been formed by the UK government to deliver the 100,000 Genomes Project. Patients have been enrolled through the National Health Service and to do this we've created a network of genomic medicine centres of excellence. Genomic medicine centres work through a lead organisation and local delivery partners in a truly collaborative partnership to ensure equitable access to all eligible participants. We're focusing on offering the opportunity to engage in the programme to patients who are most likely to gain benefit. Some of the focus of the 100,000 Genomes Project is on sequencing patients with rare inherited diseases. The role of the Genomics Medicine Centres is to identify and recruit patients with rare diseases who don't yet have a diagnosis, for whom screening their DNA may enable to us to achieve that. For all of my life I've been attending Guy's and before that St Thomas's Hospital because I'm of short stature. We've never really understood the cause or where this has come from. This was an opportunity to finally get those answers. There was an initial question of whether my family would be willing to also be involved so they could have some a comparison between my, my parents and my, my fellow siblings and they're all more than willing. We came in, we, we gave some, some blood and uh, answered a few questions and shortly in the future we'll hopefully get some answers. We're also focused on cancer because the genome of the cancer, the so-called somatic genome, can harbour mutations that tell us about how the cancer will evolve, what treatments the patient might best respond to and may indeed also prime new opportunities for therapeutic innovation in the future. There are many challenges involved in bringing whole genome sequencing of tumours into the clinic, but I think the primary one we're addressing at the moment is the sample quality. If we can drive up the sample handling and improve routine molecular pathology within our diagnostic labs, this programme will get excellent quality genomes and also leave a legacy of change within our English National Health Service. Clinicians enrol the patients in the genomic medicine centres and their samples and clinical data are passed through to us after we do some checks on the samples. We then send them to our NHS Genomic Medicine Sequencing Centre, which is at the Wellcome Trust Sanger Institute. That will be passed through to our data centre, where it will be combined with identifiable clinical data so we can return diagnoses to the health system for patient benefit. The 100,000 Genome Project means that we can be confident in terms of telling the patients exactly which condition they have. We may know other patients who have the same condition and we can start pooling information from groups of patients so that we get a better idea of how people have been affected. And we can start to learn more about which treatments have been successful and which treatments have been less so. 
We also gather additional clinical data and then create a, an anonymous version of the data which we pass through to researchers so that they can drive up the clinical interpretation and diagnoses in the healthcare system. Since this is clinical data with a rich set of phenotype information from patient records, it's going to stay in a secure environment and researchers have to come and work inside that environment. They're being organised into Genomics England Clinical Interpretation Partnerships. The Clinical Interpretation Partnership assembles a coalition of all intellects from the NHS, from academia, to drive up the interpretation of the data. In essence, what they will do is create more diagnoses flowing through to patients, better understanding of disease, new biological insights, and these may pave the way for new therapies and understanding better the journey of patients with cancer, rare disease and infection so that we can produce better solutions to address this unmet need.